let me invite the chief guest the man himself shri kt ramarao garu the honorable minister for it industries municipal administration and urban development for the state of telangana to deliver his keynote address sir please it's an honor sir. see all these other gentlemen get invited by a nice girl and then i get invited by a bearded man thank you man thank you omkar agale sunda tenledha inka i think half of you have eaten and half of you haven't so nice i that's all not my fault in fact it's all jayesh anjan's fault uh, i told him the meeting should be at 1 o'clock but obviously jayesh had other plans so thank you for uh, having us thank you very much uh, thank you omkar that was a joke of course you're a very good looking man um <laughs> thank you aparajita thank you uh, suresh garu for having us uh, thank you for this wonderful event thank you krish and uh, thank you for our uh, visiting friends uh, from germany we have uh, see we have a chris and a krish we have two of you on the same podium thank you chris thank you dirk um thank you jayesh thank you amar um and to all the family of zf i think uh, what's fabulous is those numbers that uh, were just mentioned i don't know how many of you know this but um, you've just joined a very elite club you know amazon's world's largest campus world's largest presence in terms of number of employees is not in the us is not in this is not in seattle it is actually in hyderabad now zf's largest technology center being in hyderabad you've just joined a league with amazon so i think the entire family of zf <laughs> deserves a huge round of applause and as suresh pointed out uh, that 0 to 70 70% cagr is what you said 70% compounded annual growth rate is stupendous so going from 0 to 2900 you know i think uh, we all dream of our vehicles going from 0 to 140 in like 10 seconds and 5 seconds i think that's the usual uh, you know automobile industry parlance so this is brilliant what you've done from 0 to 2900 being the largest technology center i think uh, covering over 100 supporting over 100 different uh, locations across the world is a brilliant brilliant addition so my compliments to the entire family of zf in fact the co the conversation started I can I mean I'd be remiss not to mention Mamta Chamarthi who actually facilitated the initial intro the conversation wherever she is Mamta thanks uh, thanks to you uh, what started as was pointed out as a small little seedling you know with Suresh you and all others has today become a huge gigantic tree uh, and it I'm I'm hopeful because I just heard uh, Dirk say something which was interesting I'm going to repeat it <laughs> I think it's not going to stop at 2900 he just mentioned you know you're aiming at 5000 which i think is going to create 2000 more jobs in hyderabad i have just uh, come off another meeting which was very exciting for me personally because um, just this morning we released our annual performance uh, report of the it department uh, in government of telangana in fact uh, it's a fabulous story what has happened over the last 8 years tomorrow we complete 8 years as a new state 8 years ago when we 8 years ago when the state was founded the it exports were languishing around 57000 crores of rupees per annum the, the previous year that was 2013 14 when the journey started it was 57000 crores of uh, uh, exports and 3 lakh 20000 320000 people working directly in the it sector in in hyderabad and in telangana but now if you look at uh, the story after 8 years what's impressive is not just the growth in terms of exports what's equally impressive is the number of employees that have been added from 57000 crores today we stand at 183000 crores we have actually more than tripled so it's more than a 300% growth which is stupendous and i think one of the reasons why that has happened is because of organizations like zf and the confidence that they have reposed in hyderabad in telangana and how you went from 0 to 2900 over the last 5 years i think you guys have been a significant player in that uh, growth story as well likewise the number of employees was about 320000 when we started this uh, as our journey as a new state now it's at nearly 800000 employees so almost 480000 addition which is stupendous and let me also tell you one more thing last year our growth in terms of it exports was at around 26.14% 
while the entire national average is about 17 percent. So we are growing at about 9 percent higher than the national average. And let me also tell you, let me also tell you, according to NASCOM, last year in India, across the country, about 450,000 new jobs have been added in IT sector, out of which 150,000 came from Hyderabad. That means one third of the new jobs that have been created last year were created in Hyderabad. Just trying to tell you that this is a fantastic city with a vibrant ecosystem, with more and more opportunities for talented youngsters. I think what's important for us to realize is that government of Telangana has not only fake focused on you know, the large companies like ZF, we've also invited smaller companies to participate in our mobility cluster. We've also been able to forge very interesting partnerships. You know, I was amazed when I met uh, Dirk recently in Zurich and of course uh, Suresh in the initial days to learn about your plans for Hyderabad. You're doing some tremendous stuff from here. You're doing e-mobility, you're working on autonomous driving, you're working on active and passive safety, you're working a number of uh, cutting edge things which are possibly not you know, immediately relevant for India, but eventually I think we'll get there. Because in Indian, India the roads are chaotic, I don't have to tell you. I have to tell you a funny story though. I was looking at uh, the autonomous driving uh, you know, feature here and I was inquiring with your team if uh, that autonomous vehicle is actually being run in India. Because I was a bit scared, you know, just wanting to make sure I don't go in the way of that, right? <laughs> so they said, no, 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 it's in Rotterdam and, uh, you know, in Germany. I said, cool. Uh, I remember one thing, you know, about five, year, five or six years ago when the whole smart city thing was being talked about. Um, there was a, I'll not name names, of course. There was a multinational company from the U.S. They had come in. They said, you know, we have something very cool to offer you. Uh, I have a technology that basically sends an alert to your cops, a message to your cops, if somebody cuts their lanes abruptly. Like if you switch lanes without an indicator, without a proper transition, uh, it can send you a trigger, it can send you an alert. Uh, so I smiled at them, I said, listen, uh, why don't you give me something, you know, which will send me an alert when somebody is coming at me in a one-way street. They were amused, they were like, why would you need that? I mean, it's a one-way, right? I said, welcome to India, welcome to Hyderabad. <laughs> See, we are, a, we are a diff very different bunch, you know. We are a very, very different, uh, uh, you know, kind of people are driving. Are, you know, in fact, um, I think Mark Tully uh, called it very, very famously. I think the two gentlemen here, Dirk and Chris, would appreciate it. You know, India, when you come here and when you hit the roads and when you start driving, you'd be scared initially. You'd be like, okay, there are no lanes. Okay, where, where is anybody headed? But Mark Tully called this brilliantly. He captured it brilliantly. He said, it's organized chaos. That's what we are. We are organized. You would think it's chaotic, but we are very organized chaotically also. So that way, I think ZF will have to write an entirely new set of programming and a new set of code for autonomous vehicles in India. That's the real challenge. If you can pull that off, I think, uh, yeah, I think that would be the eighth wonder, I would imagine. I'm just joking, of course. I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, please, to the press people, I was joking. I was not tarnishing <laughs> India. I was not saying anything to India. If I'm saying anything... <laughs> If I'm, if I'm saying anything at all, it was all in jest. I'm not saying anything at all. Otherwise, you know, I'll be called Desh Drohi, anti-national. <laughs> you know, a lot of things will get thrown at me in social media immediately. I'll be immediately expelled from the nation also possibly. So, you know how it is in India right now. But I don't go there. So, the point is, um, guys, you have a fantastic company that you work with, the fantastic company that you work for. But uh, we have even, even uh, better plans. In fact, uh, we are inviting, we have invited ZF to be a part of TMV, the Telangana Mobility Valley. And uh, the, you have some very interesting partners and interesting company there. You have Hyundai, who's working with us. You have uh, Stellantis, who's working with us. You have Bosch, who's working with us. You have, uh, of course, ZF, you know, it goes without saying. We, uh, and uh, you're in Pune, Suresh, so. Qualcomm. Intel, Qualcomm, Micron, and we also have the, uh, Bharat Forge, uh, you know, the Kalyani Group. So all of these interesting players coming together and creating this mobility ecosystem is something that I'm truly upbeat about because I believe the next frontier, because you know, for India from a jobs perspective, from wealth creation perspective, is in emerging technologies and mobility is one, one very, very important sector. Sustainable mobility, shared mobility, and a bunch of other variants of mobility that people talk about. When I say variant, I'm sure you're all thinking COVID. <laughs> And let me also tell you, our strengths in life sciences, again, are uh, unparalleled. In fact, Hyderabad is home 
to one third of human vaccines produced globally. So we are the vaccine capital of the world. So all the ZF expansion plans that you have, guys, uh, you are in safe hands is what I'm saying. You know, you don't have to worry about availability of vaccines and all. Uh, the other thing I also wanted to request, uh, Suresh. Suresh, I know you're based in Pune. I know you love Pune. I also went to school in Pune. I, I did my master's from Pune University. I also love Pune. I love Bangalore as well. But I think Hyderabad is the best, without a question. You know? <laughs> I love all these cities. Chennai is also nice. I mean, Chennai is also nice. Uh, they have a nice government, nice people. Delhi, I can't say the same, but uh, I think um, they're also nice people. The government is not okay. They're okay. So Hyderabad is that location, Suresh, where you will get the best bang for the buck. Uh, I know that uh, you, you just told me that for future manufacturing that you would have us in your plans. But for that, you have to come here, see us more often. You know, with Krish, you have to talk more often. We have to bring you to our brilliant biryani and brilliant Halim here. We have great stuff, by the way, I have to tell you. You'll not get that in Pune, for sure. Um, so all of this is what makes us what we are, you know, a brilliant city. Uh, communal harmony is intact, you know, no nonsense here, no halal, hijab nonsense. We are focused on getting work done. We are focused on business. We are focused on economics, not politics. I think that's important, guys, because it's important for us to realize a country like India cannot afford to have politics supersede economics. If we have to create wealth, if we have to create jobs, if we have to really aspire to be the best in the world, there is no, no substitute for any government but to focus on economics, wealth creation, job creation, and not nonsensical propaganda alone. You know, politics can happen every once in a five years. We can fight, we can, then we can let people decide who gets to do what, but the remaining time has to be complete fo completely focused on governance, delivering you know, good governance and ensuring that we create wealth for the nation. The reason why I say this is because, you know, each and every time I travel, you know, I was in Davos recently, I went to the World Economic Forum, from there I came to Zurich, I met uh, Dirk there, and then I flew back, I went to London for a day, picked up my family and then came back here. Each and every time I visit any country uh, abroad, and I'm sure most of you do the same as well, especially after COVID, I'm sure most of you are on that revenge tourism mode and a lot of you want to travel. You know, each of you is posting an Instagram about wanderlust, you know, I, I know all that. So each and every time I visit any other country, I feel really bad. I come back with a mixed bag of emotions. You know, this great country of ours with amazing talent, amazingly talented people, amazingly talented think force, uh, who has the ability to produce leaders for the rest of the world. We have our own Indian guys running Microsoft, you know, which is not too far from here. We have our own Indian guys running Google, which is also not too far from here, their second largest campus. We have them running IBM. We have them running Twitter. We have them running so many, I, can, I think I can count about 52 different large multinational companies which are being currently run, uh, which are being currently run by uh, uh, people of Indian origin. Now that is the talent of uh, India which the world admires. But each and every time you go abroad, you see all these amazing people doing amazing things, amazing Indians doing amazing things overseas, then you come back, you start thinking. I think all of us also need to think. Back in 1987, you know, India and China, I mean, in terms of sizes, population sizes, we are almost the same. We were, there, we were thereabouts. Even now, I think they're possibly 5 or 10% bigger, but uh, we are thereabouts. Back in 1987, 35 years ago, India and China, our GDP was exactly similar. 470 billion dollars. Now you cut to 35 years later, their economy now is about, their GDP is about 16 trillion. And India is still dreaming, you know, about 5 trillion economy. Where did we miss the bus? What happened? If we were of the same size, we had the same potential, then how, how is it that in 35 years later, how is it that after 35 years, China is the second largest economy of, after the United States and we are still dreaming of that 5 trillion. It's because they got their priorities right. It's because they decided that they will focus on economics. It's because they have decided that they will create wealth for the nation. They will contest and compete with the best in the world. They are not content in competing with India. They decided that they will compete with Germany. They decided that they will compete with US. They decided that they will compete with the best in the world. And where did, where did we go wrong? We decided that we will compete with Pakistan. 
we decided that we will be happy competing with Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. And look where we are. Isn't that a brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, uh, sort of a benchmark to have? We want to take pride in beating Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Afghanistan. Then we are doomed. We are never going to be in the first world. We will always have to go ho have a holiday elsewhere and not in India. That's, that's an unfortunate reality. So therefore, that's why I say politics can wait. Economics has to take center stage. India has to go bold, at least for the next one decade or two decades, and you know, aspire to get right up there, compete with the best in the world, and then we can do lots of other things, lots of other nonsense, which I'm sure they're, they're doing in Germany as well. A lot of right-wingers, left-wingers fighting each other. All that can go on forever. So my humble appeal to all of you, focus on job creation, focus on doing more cool stuff from ZF uh, Hyderabad. In fact, uh, we should have more and more Germans coming here to learn from you, Indian guys, you know, on how to do the best engineering, you know, for their automobiles. I think German engineering is world class. We all know that. The Beamers, the Mercs, and every other product that we love in India as well and across the world as well are all German. Their engineering prowess is well known. But let's compete. Let's actually create new benchmarks from this ZF facility in Hyderabad so that not only Dirk and Chris, but the entire ZF team will come here, learn from you guys, and appreciate you for your talent. So all the very best. Thank you. Jai Telangana.